Welcome to the complete collection of LeBron James's greatest stories told by NBA players and legends. This is part one of a three-part series because obviously LeBron James being one of the greatest players in NBA history has countless stories and this video would be about two hours long had I not broken it up into three parts. So if you haven't seen any of the other episodes within the full series, there is a playlist link in the description box down below and on the top right of your screen. If you click on that, you'll find all the episodes within the series. Because this is such a long episode, even broken up into three parts, it has taken me a long time to create and I would really appreciate if you guys could quickly hit that like button before the video begins. If you're new and you like videos just like this one, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification button so you are notified when a new episode drops. Lastly, I wish you all a very, very Merry Christmas and a wonderful 2022. Without further ado, here's the complete collection of LeBron James' Greatest Stories, Part 1. We play in different eras. He's, he's an unbelievable player. Yeah, he's one of the best players in the world, uh, if not the best player in the world. When you start the comparisons, I think it is what it is. You know, It's just a standard measurement. You know, and I, I take it with a grain of salt. He is a heck of a basketball player, without a doubt. It was like when, when God made him, he was like, all right, I'm going to give you all this. I'm going to take everything, but I'm going to take one thing from him. I ain't going to give you no line. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to give you everything else. That's what I tell Brad. I'm like, he gave you everything. And I remember, I don't, I don't know if I even told nobody other than my close circle. I remember it was um, it was a play we was trying to run and one of our teammates forgot the play and Brian told him the play. He said, if you miss these free throws, you know who's gonna win it. All right now, what makes it, what makes it worse, what makes it worse is this. Brian says, I'm gonna get to this spot and shoot. But if I get here, and any one of them is flinching off of their man, I'm beaming it to that man. Right here. And we've been spoiled. Yeah. It's, it's just been it's just been remarkable what he's been able to do. I feel confident because I'm the best player in the world. It's simple. For years, I always caught so much flack. Of you know, us being the, the better team or whatever we was at, at one point in the, in the Eastern Conference Finals and people not realizing, like, it's, it's it's tough to get past this motherfucker. I don't care who you are, you know what I mean? And see him come to the West and be able to do the same thing, it's, it's, it's a testament to his greatness and, you know, his IQ to the game when you he, when he go out there and play. You know, um, I remember, um, like you said, 16 when we went to the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, we won game three and four, and it was like a whole nother mindset click for him. And the player to coach against, and one most difficult in going through him with the, in the playoffs was LeBron James. This guy was looking in your mouth like right there and just calling it, it was telling the players exactly what was going to happen on the play that you called. And I remember, I don't, I don't know if I even told nobody other than my close circle. I remember it was, um, it was a play we was trying to run, and one of our teammates forgot the play, and Brian told him the play. But I was also in the gym when I watched him on the floor against Toronto tell Patrick Patterson where he was supposed to go on the play they had called out of timeout late in the fourth quarter. He's like, no, Pat, you're supposed to stand over there, and you're going to pin down for DeMar over here. <laughs> wow. That's, that's hilarious. That's who he is. <laughs> like it was some crazy shit. It was some like, it was some crazy stuff. We called it a play. And he was like, "What?" And Brian told him what our play was. You know, and it just shows you like how locked in this dude be when it comes to that come the winning time, man. And and you see it when he out there on both ends, man. But that change, and you you know this, like we we beat him a couple times when he was in Cleveland. He was not that way. I, I've never seen a change in a player. Uh, I knew we were in trouble in Miami uh, when we were coaching. When he was in Cleveland, he was just playing right, basketball. Right, right. We get to Miami, and he's in Miami now, and he's calling our plays out. He's staring over at our bed. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he's reading stuff. And yeah. I remember saying, oh, oh this is not, uh, this is not <laughs> good. You know, there, there are a lot in 
Dwayne brings it up, there's when you're drawing a play in a timeout, you know as an opposing coach that that one guy can can screw things up for you. I know you know the famous, you know, free throw, LeBron, mm -hmm. you know the So yeah. so what did he say to you and then how did you like how are you able to like maintain your focus when you missed him? We respect for there, but like missed him, but like how did you lose sight like for what you were trying to do? Like make the free throw and then uh, Okay, so we have to back up a little bit. All right. Because um I was balling. Looking to end down, Arenas puts up the three. Bang! Gilbert Arenas ties the game! And a timeout. <laughs> I, was, I was balling that fourth quarter, and we, it, miracle comeback, you know, um, down three. Um, I hit the, uh, hit almost like a 30 footer to, to take us to overtime. Um, kind of got a little tired and, you know, in overtime, but. Got to the free throw line, you know, it's butter, game's mm. over. We have one, I'm about to hit these three, this is easy. And LeBron comes by and taps you on the chest and whispers something to you. What did, what did he tell you? He said, if you miss these free throws, you know who's gonna win it. Mm. You know, and when he tapped me and he's like, you know, if you miss these, you know, that's game. And for that one second, I became human and thought about it. All right now, what makes it what makes it worse? What makes it worse is this. So because we gamble at LeBron's house, me, Damon Jones, you know that was our group. Right. So Damon Jones was horrible, horrible. He was hor horrible, horrible at cards. <laughs> so he owed me money. So I always used to say, I like every time we played them, I always used to scream out. <laughs> The landlord's here. The landlord needs his rent money. Right. So that's, I'll, like every time we came to town, shoot around, I'm yelling it. The game, I'm yelling it. Like that's all I yell. So I told the coach, hey, anytime you put Damon Jones in, I'm going one for flat. He owes me money. Until he pays me my money, <laughs> one for flat. He's going to be a liability out on his court. And that's what I did every time he came in, one for flat. So they wasn't, so he stopped playing. So he doesn't even play in game six. So when he when he whispers, you know who's gonna hit it, everybody assumed it was him. I knew what he was talking about. You know, and it, and it had me thinking about it. And I'm and I, I can even see it on my face when I watch, like, oh yeah, you're missing these, bro. Mm -hmm. And then I missed the first one and I'm sitting there like, how the hell did I miss that? That's just so off. Mm -hmm. Missed the second one. And I'm sitting here like, Yo, did this just really happen? Where did I go? I don't miss free throws. I don't miss clutch free throws. And I think the thought went into my head of they really gonna put Damon Jones in and let him hit a shot. And I just <laughs> I just missed. Like it was like I was I was balling that game. Just hit the three to get us in overtime, playing great in overtime. Um, very great battle. And then I see Damon Jones in there stretching. And, and they really put the man in. And the fact that LeBron even passed him the ball is what hurt the most. Damon Jones in the corner just came in the game for the first time in two games and hit the shot. Who 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 does that? <laughs> that, that, that that's what that's why I said I I had to, that's why I said I went to go like do mental stuff. Right. Like with the uh, uh with the uh, mental training because right, right. I, I was like. Ah. This didn't just happen. You didn't tell me this man was gonna come in and hit, and then he comes in and then you pass him the ball like he's done hit five straight threes. I need to go see some hill because I don't want to be the, the next uh, Nick Anderson out here. LeBron is 36, turns 37, I believe, in December. Yeah, man. Um, how is he still like? What makes him special? And even we talk about mileage and how you know how he's doing it night in and night out, where. You talk about usage rate. You talk about, you know, um, load management. He ain't doing what Kawhi's doing. He ain't doing what these other KD. And I love KD. I love Kyrie. But you know, KD just and took AD off. AD hurt. AD hurt. So LeBron got to take on more with LA right now. Right. So like, what makes him special? You know, you had that. Yeah. This dude up there. 
He left the hospital with more than everybody. Bro, bro, listen. Bro, Brandon, hey, the, be Mars. No, no. This dude out up the, there, out bro. Out the womb. Bro, his shopping cart of talent when he was born was bigger than everybody's, dog. They gave him everything. Dude behind LeBron, he don't have <laughs> nothing. <laughs> yeah, but, get, but you got to give me more, man, because <clears throat> we know what goes into it, the sports science, how we train, how we eat, how we sleep, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. What are we not seeing that you saw? Yeah. You're right? You guys have a chef for the show, right? We, we understand about putting in your body. We understand about the, the, the training that you need. As athletes, former athletes, we understand the training that you need. But ultimately, man, I've watched, I've watched this guy, and I, I see him take care of his body. I see him own it 100%. But I have also know that guys can roll their ankle and be out four weeks. I've seen this guy roll his ankle and come back and give you about 20 in the fourth quarter. I'm talking about a bad roll ankle, and I'm like, oh, he done. He come right back. I'm out four weeks with this roll ankle. He come right back, fourth <laughs> right. quarter, scored 20. Right. It's the... It was like when, when God made him, he was like, all right, I'm going to give you all this. I'm going to take everything, but I'm going to take one thing from him, and I ain't going to give you no lining. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to give you everything else. That's what I tell bro. I'm like, he gave you everything. He gave him everything. He just said, I'm going to just take this one but thing. But when is he going to let it go, though? <laughs> no, he, listen, as long as he got money, he ain't letting he, it go. He's too rich to let it go. Do, do you think he carry in his pocket the GOAT conversation? Does he want to be better than MJ? He said he's the GOAT. And then after I stopped, I was like, that one right there made you the greatest player of all time. You no, know, everybody was just talking how they were the greatest team of all time. Like, it was the greatest team to ever assembled. And for us to come back, you know, the way we came back in that fashion, I was like, you did, you did something special. Uh, like I said, man, bro, you my dog. You know this, though. Me and bro have been in arguments about this, though. Well, does he not. take that? Does he like? Is he conscientious about that shit? Bro laughs at that shit, bro. Because like, I feel like he's he has these... in the conversation. Why the fuck does? I mean, he I feel like he is the conversation. He's getting compared to Michael Jordan, though. We have real life arguments in barbershops about who's better between him and Mike. So let me ask you this: though. Fuck who he go get bad for? He don't get bad, bro. That's what I'm saying about Bron. That's raw as fuck to me. Because me personally. I would be like, Mike got to play me one-on-one. -on -one. Most people want to be the GOAT, and you can't get there, right. right? We fall short. We run out of talent. I ran out of talent, injuries or whatever. LeBron is actually there. Do you think that takes away, do you think having this conversation sometimes takes away from what LeBron has accomplished? Yes, though? because he's not done, and we're talking about everything he's doing now, right? We talk about the GOAT, the greatest of all time. That's when a player is done, and now you can put their resume versus the next resume. Mm -hmm. Right now, we've been, we've been talking about LeBron as a GOAT since... 2010. Yeah. We're 2021. This man still got another five years to play if he, if, you know, God willing, he don't get hurt. So, like what I said, he will be a GOAT. Someone's going to say, LeBron's my GOAT, hands down, nothing else. Just like I say, Jordan's my GOAT. It's generational GOATs. That's what people got to understand. It's yeah, a lot of eras. great players that play sports, but it's eras of GOATs. And everyone want to make one GOAT. It's, it's impossible to make one GOAT because as great as LeBron is, it will be another. This is just the way the game is. This is the way the world works. It will be another person that come in and become someone's GOAT. Talk to us about two. I mean, there's a, I don't know if it's true, but I heard that Bron saved your life. Man, look, some swimming shit, any truth to it? I just it, want to know if it's true. It's, it's, it's truth, man. We was... What happened? We was in like the little grotto, like in the Bahamas. You know, you could swim underneath. Because Jack is great to get in the bathtub, so you can't swim neither? I can swim, but I'm going to tell you some real <laughs> shit. I can, I can survive. <laughs> okay, that's I important. That's what you mean. So we in there, and... We trying to get back, everybody swimming back to the, to the boat. But I, I'm snorkeling too, we snorkeling on the way back. And my head is in the water, and I'm snorkeling, and I look up, and every time I look up out the water, the boat is further and further oh, away. No, no. <laughs> and I'm getting pushed by the current. By the undertow and current. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> yo. Like, niggas is looking at me like, like I'm joking. I'm like, yo, I need help. Like this, I'm, ready. I'm swimming, I'm like this. I'm trying to hold on to a rock. He was exhausted. I was exhausted. I'm like, I ain't gonna fight that current like that. So the one guy was like, just don't fight it. You know what I'm saying? Let it, just go with it. Go with the flow. And I see Bron jump in the water. He's just, you know, Aquaman. Aquaman. Aquaman jump in the water. <laughs> I was, because D-Wade was right in front of me. Uh -huh. D got on right before me. So I'm thinking D going to come back, but I know D ain't rocking with the water like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like D saying like, he like, yo, Yo, go get him, man. He, he, go get him. <laughs> and I just see Brian, Brian just coming. Like, I got you, I got you, champ. I got you, I got you. Grab me. We went back, we went back to the boat, man. Dude, so, all purpose. The Brian is all purpose. So, so you know, Lifeguard, all kind of shit. But it's crazy because he can really, he's very good at a lot of shit. 
Mm -hmm. Like, I don't give a fuck what it is. He's yeah. going to be successful at that. Mm -hmm. He's going to figure it out. One of them people. He's just one of them, he's just one of them natural freaks, man. You just, I call him a lab baby, man. He, right. was, he was built in the lab. <laughs> <laughs> watching LeBron, and we've all been pampered, if not spoiled, to the fact that he's been consistent every year to come out with this certain level. But we forget that LeBron is great while he's playing the game. But let's just talk about his progression. Obviously, Tay, you, you've played him. You've seen um, moments where he was over the top great. Talk about just his greatness and how, you know, how we are spoiled as fans and uh, his greatness and what he's putting on the game. You know what, uh, you know, from the time that he first came in the league, you know, Saw it. his debut in Sacramento where he was attacking the rim with, you know, ferocity and right. finishing. And right. as you can see here, when he had that uh, phenomenal second half against us, it's right. like he just hit a turbo button. Man. You know, we in quicksand. Yeah. Right. You know, we went to fifth straight conference finals at that moment. <laughs> you know, we didn't play 500 games in five seasons. Right. We in quicksand, my man putting the turbo button on, and he's still doing it. It's like he's hitting the R1 on you. He's still hitting the turbo button to this day. Well, there's no reason for us to be here if we want confidence. May 31st, 2007 was the Eastern Conference Finals. The series was tied two to two. Being in the Palace of Auburn Hills in the playoffs, that's one of the most hostile environments to be in. You just feel like it's just you 12 against the whole city of Detroit. The night at the Palace of Auburn Hills when LeBron went nuts in the fourth quarter in overtime. And I always have to look back and say, now what was it? It was like 25 straight points and 29 out of 30 or something like that. But it was one of those times where we're doing the show from the arena because it was the conference finals. And we're on the set and Kenny and Chuck are there. And it was the only time I've seen him speechless. I wanted to put the responsibility on myself and have me answer the call. Here's James. Yes. The defense was flat, basically just, just gave him one of my left to right crossovers. Once I seen I had him off balance, I wanted to try to be aggressive as I could to, uh, to make Tate not even thinking about, you know, coming over and try to block the shot. He has been spectacular. As the fourth quarter started running down, it got to a point where I said, we've come this far. There's no looking back now. As a leader, I can't allow my team to fail. Out of 10, James with a step. This has been some kind of performance by this young guy. You start to notice that you're in the zone. All you're thinking about is your next make. Here's James. <laughs> he scored 15 of the last 16 points. You know, everything is working, so now you have the defense off balance. They don't know if you're going to pull up and shoot a jump shot. They don't know if you're going to shoot a fadeaway. Got clock to five. James has to fire. And oh. scores! Oh, my! LeBron James, he has scored the last 20 of the Cavs' last 21 points. I think we've gone from having a winner in this game to having a survivor. It's one thing to leave a fan speechless, but when you leave a player speechless, because they've been there, they know they know what it what it takes to play in a playoff game you know what it takes to what it takes to win and when they see a player doing it to that level that that lebron did that night and they're just like <laughs> i mean i was getting that look <laughs> but as we were watching it it was just like shake your head jaw dropping wow it was like who's going to dig down to win this basketball game on top lebron behind the back dribble four Filled it up. I don't believe it. He scored the last 24 of the last 25. Jumps up a three. It's through. 46 points for LeBron James. He has scored the last 27 of the last 28. 24 seconds to go in double OT. Baseline left sheet. Turn around. Got blocked. No foul. Cavaliers at possession with 11.4 to go. Set it here. That's what I stay after practice for, and this is what I'll be in the weight room for. To, if it's that one game where you need to use every little bit of energy to help your team win. James, working it down, five seconds, four, three, James scores, and the Cavaliers come away 
with an improbable victory here at the Palace. He had a magical game against the Pistons. When you, because you played against Jordan when he was, do you see the same velocity? You see similarities there? The difference is, um, you know, they're, they're both equally great. LeBron James always came to the game with the same thing that you came to the game with, where he was concerned about others, right? Mm. Not only did he have to, have to score, no. but he also had to make this one better, had to make, the, and he had the responsibility. Mm. Jordan, you know, took, Kobe, took it on, took it the, those yeah. guys, they come to the game and it's like, okay, Me. how many points you need Me. to win? Me. 40, right? right? Oh, 41 good enough? Mm. All right, tomorrow I'm gonna get 50. Mm. Oh, 50 ain't good enough? He okay, I can he get 60. He had 48, he had 48. 48 points for LeBron James. He scored 29 of the last 30. One of the great performances of all time. Right here. And yeah. we've been spoiled. Yeah. He's, it's just been it's just been remarkable what he's been able to do, uh, you know. And not only that, he came into the league with a lot on his shoulders. Right. What's LeBron like? LeBron, he's he's a cool guy. <laughs> he um, he he's a guy that actually for me when I was uh, coming through college when I first met him, he came to come a couple of my games. He's just real down to earth, um, approachable. Um, gave me a lot of mental you know nuggets that I could take with me as a as I started my own NBA career and um, you know obviously as a basketball player the dude's amazing so uh, somebody that has a lot of pressure on him and uh, somehow seems to keep getting better. I know how we felt playing against Jordan like Jordan was the most dominant player in our era and I would we would we would talk for hours on the phone watching him play against another team, mm -hmm. you know, just admiring him play. But at the same time, it was like there were things that he did in the air that we just couldn't do. Mm -hmm. And I look at LeBron James in this era, and I say he's doing things that, you know, y'all just can't do. How, how do y'all feel about LeBron? And then we can talk about how we <laughs> talked about Jordan. I'd say uh, in terms of you know, one guy being able to change the course of a game the way he can. Uh, he controls the pace. He does things that you kind of look like, you know, how did how did he how did he do that? Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter sometimes how great a defense you play on him. And it's sheer strength and power to get to the basket. Um, he's obviously developed that outside game that that keeps you honest. Um, it's something that uh, you need all antennas up, all five guys every night, and you know. Um, if you don't bring it, he's, he's liable to try to expose you. So, uh, right. in terms of you know that first championship run, um, matching up with him, and some of the stuff that he did on a nightly basis, it was it was it was spectacular. But it, you know, at the end of the day, like that gives you even more kind of competitiveness and fire to you know try to figure out how to overcome it and, and, and still win. And it gives you a little bit more gratifying feeling when you do too. So. You know, do you do you feel like a, a strength difference? Because we talk about it a lot on television when we say, oh, he's so much bigger and stronger. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what it's like to feel it. Can mm -hmm. you, like, describe? Oh, you can feel it, especially on the block and transition. You're just in awe of, like, I've never seen such a big human move so lightly on his feet. Mm -hmm. Like, his steps are small, but they're so quick. You know, mm -hmm. it's incredible. I remember one time in the finals, I got the ball on a break, and. Andre was behind me, Iguodala, and LeBron was chasing me. He said, you better dunk it, you better dunk it. So I went up to flush it, and I almost killed myself because I was nervous. LeBron was going to come by and, and just said, oh, okay. you better dunk it, dunk it, because he was coming full speed. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I almost, the landing wasn't pretty. <laughs> I made sure I flushed that thing because I wasn't trying to see that ball go to half court. Right. So that's just kind of the presence he has in the court. You know, you know where he's at at all the time. He's great at playing free safety, kind of like Jordan was. and. You're just in awe of the things you can do in the air. I mean, like you said, me and Steph could never do these things, no matter how much we work, work on our vert, right. how many squats we do, we'll never be able yeah. to jump 40 inches and yeah. alter our body like that. We gotta get it fundamentally, we right. gotta get it for, with skill, but those dudes blend it with skill and just sheer power. There's no nights off and that's draining. Yeah, I know who he is. Um, you know, <laughs> that's not, he's part of the front office group. He was really excited about about me missing, uh, you know, that shot a little bit more extra 
than I would have liked, but you know, he got a roof for his, for his team, obviously. And he was, uh, you know, he showcased that. So, you know, I knew I had another quarter and uh, the fourth quarter is my favorite. Read it perfectly. LeBron three on two, LeBron all the way. LeBron scores. Oh. Eight points, LeBron again. The deal all the way, LBJ. Throw it down, timeout. Cleveland. Here comes Braun all the way to score. Here we've only got three to shoot. Logo. Logo three for LeBron. It's LeBron. Just hit that big three. Down the middle he goes. Three. LeBron stepping back for a three. Off the court two in this area. Three. Oh now. Trying to get it in the fridge. LeBron tough shot. No, Nothing no. too tough for the King tonight. Nothing too tough. <laughs> he was definitely the reason why uh, LeBron went for 21 in the fourth quarter and uh, outscored the whole Cavs team. So, you know, he looked for anything similar to what Kobe did. Looked for anything for motivation and he definitely <laughs> found it. it. The real part about it, look at the head snap. It was a quick Instant. head snap. Like, right? oh no, you did just like he knew and the then he laugh. back like at he him again. Knew who laughed. Yeah. Exactly. Like I, I heard was, that I got laugh you. Before. I got you. You want to wake up? You want to make wake me up? I right. got something for you right here. And he went off. And that is the end of this first. Welcome to the complete collection of LeBron James's greatest stories, part two. This is a three-part series. The first episode was released last week on the channel, so if you haven't seen it, go watch that episode first. I'd really, really appreciate if you guys could hit that like button to support the channel. If you are new around here and you think you may enjoy the series, be sure to check the playlist link in the description box down below or on your top right. And if you enjoy the series, hit that subscribe button. And you can also hit that notification button so you are notified when a new episode releases. Without further ado, comment down below which player you would like to see next, and here is the complete collection of LeBron James' greatest stories told by NBA players and legends, part two. Who's the greatest scorer of this era? Is it Steph? Is it James? KD? LeBron James. Scorer. LeBron James. And I turned on ESPN one day, LeBron James was the guy that people says the next Jordan. Tim, in your opinion, what do you think is wrong with, with LeBron James's offense? I don't think there's anything wrong with LeBron's offense. Yo, he knows everything that's going on on that court. He knows where everyone's supposed to be. He knows, he knows if the play is real, the play is fake. He knows exactly what is expired all through that game. I don't know what the hell is going on. I don't know where he is, but mentally, I mean, he was like shooting 60% for weeks, you know, and I mean, he wasn't missing. He made, made it easy then. It's like, all right, cool, I'll be here on defense. When you think about LeBron James and KD, number one, is he that rival for you? And if it is LeBron, how did LeBron make you a better player? Well, since I was in ninth grade um, and I turned on ESPN one day, LeBron James was the guy that people says the next Jordan. LeBron James has about a 40 inch vertical leap, unlimited range on his jump shot, but the strength of his game could be his passing. James is young enough to have been born during Michael Jordan's rookie season and talented enough that some say he might be the next Jordan. The two number 23s have already played together. For me, it could be compared to Michael, Magic, you know, Kobe, all the ones that make it so successful in the league. You know, it's great, and I'm going to just keep working hard, and someday it could be another one that could be compared to me. So in my mind, I was a 6'2", like, JV player. I didn't I didn't play varsity my first year, my, my ninth grade year. So in my mind, I was like, this is the best player, so I have to be as good as this, or I have to look him in the eyes at some point in my career. So... You know, that was always in the back of my mind as I worked, as I played games. I wonder, uh, because that's what was told to me, that that was the new guy. That was the next Jordan. So, you know, but just having somebody that's been around since I took basketball serious and we're still playing against each other, that's pretty special to me, the longevity, you know, and you can call it a robbery, you can call it whatever, but to have somebody at the same position, whereas we guarding each other uh, when we play is, uh, is definitely special because he's one of the best players that ever touched the floor. Who's the greatest scorer of this era? Is it Steph? Is it James? KD? LeBron James. Scorer. LeBron James. It was open as always. Score. I, was open as always. I hear exactly what you're saying. <laughs> I hear exactly what you're saying. And, and I, people might disagree with me, but understand this. The greatest scorer is not only its consistency, its longevity, and its amount. 
Like, well, I know, and it's weird. I know because it's weird when you when you you don't think of him as that. He doesn't approach the game as that. But when you look at the records, they are that. <laughs> See, yeah, and that's the and that's the that's the, so like if someone says who is the so, best natural score in the game today, everyone's gonna say you know KD. I would, yeah. yeah. But who's the best scorer of all time? <laughs> It'd be LeBron. That's it's like, when the number should, because that's longevity, yeah, and, but, but, and he could do anything he wants on the court. No, but it's long. You say longevity. Like, how did Kareem and Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant and Karl Malone get to that level? Kareem longevity. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It was all longevity. So it's like LeBron James playoff scoring, right? Playoff scoring. He passed Michael Jordan three seasons ago, and he's going to add to that, right? Or before his career ends. So to pass LeBron James in all-time playoff scoring records, somebody is going to have to do what? Average 30 <laughs> points a game and go to like 13 NBA finals. That shit's not going to be broken. That, the, the playoff one's not. And then he's going to pass Kareem. So as much as we don't view him as a scorer, right? Like Steph's greatest shooter, Kevin Durant, greatest like weapon as a scorer because he's so big. But like, who's the greatest scorer? He's number four all time right now. You know what's so funny? I had an argument with someone about that. And it was like, uh, it was like, uh, he's not even a, a, a natural scorer. And I say, like, and that should be funny because <laughs> the guy who's a fast, per, a fast uh, pass first thinker has beaten out two dominant scores. Guys that like, just scored they first. They just scored first and... And that's not a disrespect. So how, how do you... <laughs> first. Like I said, how do you say he's not... <laughs> 25 points a game for 15 straight years? When you're talking about the greatest scorers of all time, would you put Michael Jordan and Kobe and Kareem and Karl Malone mm -hmm. up there? But you don't consider Braun, even though he's about to pass all of those guys. But that's <laughs> Timmy, in your opinion, what do you think is wrong with, with LeBron James's offense? I don't think there's anything wrong with LeBron's offense. You can live with him knocking down jump shots. Parker and Duncan each with 16. James to the basket, inside, banks it in, and there's his first field goal after missing his initial eight shots from the field. I'll rephrase the question. What are you guys doing schematically to limit him offensively? Well, we're guarding him with five guys. All by, by doing it with pack it in or, uh, you know, what else tactically? I mean, every, every, every team tries to guard him with five guys in one way or another. What are the Spurs doing that's different than well, other We opponents? understand what kind of player he is. He, he, he is the, the, the best player in the world. So we're respecting him as that. So we're, we're, uh, we're trying to make his life as difficult as possible. And uh, every time he touches the ball, if we can keep him out of the open court, that's obviously where he really thrives. And uh, if we can keep those away and keep his, you know, his rhythm down, then it's better for us. Good job, buddy. Good job. Hey, man, I love how you're on 15 minutes. Stay that way, man. Stay that way. You're going to drive these guys. This is going to be your league in a little while. But uh, I appreciate you giving us this here. <laughs> That was, of course, after the final game. You said, this is going to be your league, but I appreciate you giving us a year. What was that moment like? Um, you could just tell what he was going to be and who he was going to be, and uh, that he was going to be such a dominant player for such a long time. And uh, uh, it, was, it was great playing games early and again uh, late in my career. Was, was Miami LeBron peak LeBron? Yeah, I have to argue. I think um, he's, he's transformed so many times, but I feel... He was on another planet. Um, and just watching his, his, his trajectory uh, of his career, you just, just see it coming. Um, but uh, uh, playing against a, a, a young LeBron and an, old, and an older <laughs> LeBron, uh, yeah. two different players, two totally different players. And it was, it, was, it was fun to watch and be a part of. And it got to the point where we were just kind of, I'm a pretty good basketball player. But I'm kind of just watching him do his thing right now because he's just, I don't know what the hell is going on. I don't know where he is, but mentally, I mean, he was like shooting 60% for weeks, you know, and I mean, he wasn't missing. He made it easy. Then it's like, all right, cool. I'll be here on defense getting some stops. I'll be open whenever you guys need me. It just became, yeah, it became, he, 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 was, he was very, very motivated to be successful. LeBron, you've talked about how much smarter you are compared to uh, the 2007 Finals, but what about on the court, your jump shot? Are you more confident now and the improvement since then? How is that going to affect how they guard you this time around? Oh, well, I think in 07, they, um, they, you know, they 
kept, you know, when I got the ball, they kept me on the sideline. They went under a lot of my pick and rolls and dared me to shoot. And uh, back in 07, I, I ran a lot of pick and rolls. Um, and, you know, they funneled me to the, to the sideline with, you know, Duncan and Alberto and, and Bruce Bowen and Michael Finley and those guys that just funneled me all the way to the sideline and dared me to shoot and, you know, didn't allow me to get into the paint where I, you know, did most of my damage back in 07. So, um, if you go into my pick and roll now, I'm going to shoot. And, uh, and I'm confident I'm going to make every last one of them. Up a lot more. James for three. It's it out. James sets three-pointer. It's good. It's wide open for three. That's three three-pointers for LeBron James. James will try another three. Hucks it in. LeBron James, fourth three-pointer of the game. Again, look how far off they're playing. He'll try it again. It's good. LeBron James making the Spurs pay. 20 minutes. James pulls up, puts it in. James puts it up, knocks it down. James pulls up, puts it in. Four-point lead. We haven't seen a player like Michael Jordan or Kareem or someone of that level change his game as much as it seems like LeBron has changed his. Would you say that's right? Absolutely. I'm just more confident in my ability to shoot the ball. Um, but at the same time, I also have um, a lot more weapons with me. We could put him off the ball, have him working off of cuts, you know, make a play for him, you know, um, get him in the post, you know, get the pick and roll, excuse me, get the pick and roll. You know, we, he, he functioned in, in different spots in, 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 um, in the court, but he had Ray Allen to kick it to and James Jones and Mike Miller to kick it to. I mean, dead eye spot up shooters, you know? So I think that made him a little more dangerous. Uh, but still, either way, it's like 1A and 1B to me. I mean, you know, I'll take I'll take his fifth best career, and that'll be the best of my, you know, best <laughs> ever. <laughs> to, to stay at the top of the league for this long and to perform the way he has is absolutely amazing. Just to pick up on something you said the other day, Pop, about LeBron, I just asked him, you know, when people say you need to be more aggressive, and he just cut me off and he goes, I don't really care what people say about me needing to be more aggressive. You've kind of picked up on the fact that he's really kind of somehow changed his approach in terms of the noise. Yeah, you know, I've said it a lot. You know, you know during the season, people ask me, you know, before the playoffs, I mean, he, he's grown. He's, he's a grown man. Uh, he doesn't need any of you to tell him anything. He knows more than all of you put together. He understands the game. Uh, if he makes a pass, uh, and you all think he should have shot it or he shoots it and you think he should have made a pass, your opinions mean nothing to him, as they should not mean anything to him. Uh, he's a great player, and uh, his decisions are what they are. It's a game. All decisions don't work out. They didn't always work out for Michael or Tim Duncan or Shaquille O'Neal or Kobe Bryant or whoever. Uh, you, you make a decision, and that's what you go with. But. Uh, all the chirp, chirp, chirping about what he should have done. Uh, I thought it was hilarious from the beginning. And frankly, I was very happy for him as the year progressed when it became obvious he was comfortable in his own skin and didn't need to listen to any of you all. You know, um, I can't remember the exact numbers, but I always think about like, how did I lock it to somebody up? <laughs> how much did somebody have against me? Mm -hmm. LeBron, he averaged 25. <laughs> he, LeBron came into the league, uh, first game in Indiana. Oh, so pissed. First game in Indiana, he gave me 25. Mm. He went to the fans and said, this is your best defender, right? I heard this, right? I'm fucking furious. I know you're furious. You, I'm, 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 I walked the other way, I'm like, this kid is great. I got out of this kid, is fucking really good. <laughs> but I'm super fucking pissed, he disrespect me, and I want to walk up to this motherfucker. And you know, he, he, but he bust my ass, yeah, right? He done to all of us. You know, so he, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? First game. Mm -hmm. So that was like, wow, <laughs> this is crazy. Can you talk about your relationship with LeBron James? Yeah, I've seen him play. He's very talented. The first, <laughs> so I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm growing up and I'm watching, you know, this guy, Michael Jordan. I think all you guys know him. I think, 
Uh, uh, <laughs> so I'm growing up watching this guy on TV every day, and uh, I'm like, wow, you know, he's an amazing basketball player, and hopefully someday I get an opportunity to meet him. So, oh, yeah, when you first met Mike, like, how'd you feel? Amazing. It's probably how guys feel when they meet LeBron. Um, I think it was my junior year of high school. I go up to Chicago and I go to a gym called Hoops where he he plays basketball in the summertime. Yeah. I was in Chicago because I got drafted and then like, you know, the runs was at Hoops. And we were getting ready to leave and we were literally walking out the door. This red Ferrari pulls down the street and it was literally like, for LeBron and I, it was like Black Jesus was coming down the street <laughs> in a red Ferrari with a bucket cap on. I didn't know he was going to be there, but I seen him, I seen him walking towards me and it was kind of like, he was walking on air. He, I, I was. I had to. I had to pinch myself. Was, was is that my, Michael? Who? And it was. It's like he was like Black Jesus to me. Like. And Michael sat and had a conversation with us just about basketball, and I honestly don't remember anything that was said in the conversation. It was like everything just sounded like blurred out to me. Like I was listening <laughs> to God speak. It was like. I don't even remember what he was saying, and that was the first time he met Michael and myself. You're saying when he was 16, you guys would go to the Hoops Gym, the famous Hoops Gym in Chicago, and play with a bunch of pros. Tell me about, about that. So we went over that spring and took LeBron, and we were kind of just like in awe, literally like in awe. It was like during the days, like all the pros would come in, like, Antoine Walker, Ron Artest, and Jamal Crawford. You know what I'm saying? Finley was in there, Stackhouse was in there, a young LeBron was in there. Did he know of you? Well, yeah, I think he did. He, mm -hmm. you know, he, he called me a young fella, of course, yeah. uh, you know, and just basically told me to keep working at it and someday I can get to the NBA. I was a junior in high school, so, uh, yeah. you know, I guess he told me something right and I just kept working at it. At first, it was like LeBron was this 16 year old kid. They're like, you know, he couldn't get in the first game or two because they, they're pros. Why the hell do they care Great about a 16-year-old yeah, high school player? What, who the hell is that? What yeah. difference does it make? We're here to get our work in and we're trying to get better. But then Tim would let him in at the end of the run. Yeah, I was Twan there. Twan brought him out there. That's I, why I he gave was him a there. forearm on fast break. He was coming. He was cooking. He was cooking. He couldn't, nobody can guard him. LeBron James. At all. He couldn't guard him. I'm like, I'm getting embarrassed. He's embarrassing us. He was out there playing and if you watch the game, he wasn't like dominating. Yeah. He wasn't like, but he didn't stick out. You didn't go like, oh, there's a kid out there. It was like, oh, there's just another player out there. Like, you know, he got a couple buckets. <laughs> He's coming out full speed, LeBron James. Like, boom, I lay him on the floor. He get up and start cooking more. He's just tough. He's about, he was about 225 at that time. Mm. But I remember him just being tough. LeBron was nice, huh? 15 years old. I killed him. And I remember mm. he was big and strong and they couldn't guard him. That's yeah. how that wins clutch points. He was definitely playing well. What was it like meeting uh, Michael Jordan for you? Was that pretty cool? Oh, yeah, it was great. You know, um, for him, for me to meet Michael Jordan, it was like, I think it was better than the president. I look at it like, you're not going to get any better if you don't play hard. And you're not going to get any better if you're not trying to win every time. It seems like every drill that we do, we keep score. And if you lose, you run. No one likes to run. Running for no reason just is, is not what no one likes to do. So when you're out there, you're just kind of trying to compete and trying to win every time you're out there. Just play as hard as you can. If you're going up against me, you're trying to bust me up because I'm going to come at you the same way, you know? They always want us to address this on social media. They got like the one little clip going around from right before that I was about to draft LeBron. Just so like D Miles, Bulls, like Ricky Davis. I want to say maybe yeah. Smith. It showed like three or four of them. And it seemed like they saying like some Hayden stuff. Is the 18 year old from Akron truly the savior? We have better players than him in his position already on our team though. Um, his potential is probably, the sky's the limit for him though. Good LeBron is just gonna add, add to what we need and you know, just make, make things a little bit easier. This young kid gets picked up uh, on the team. He's on the cover of this magazine, cover of that magazine. I saw LeBron. Uh, on this channel, that channel, he's dunking over pimple-faced punks <laughs> in Akron. I was like, uh, yeah, let me see some real action. Yeah. At what point did you realize that he was totally legit and the real thing? And did you ever imagine that he would wind up being this great? Well, I knew he was the real thing when he came in. Um, you it did? Was just, it was just a matter of time to when he was going to pick up and when he was going to actually learn the game. It's a difference in being great and learning the NBA game.
And him coming in at an early age, um, it was a good fit. He came in and he did his thing. But when, when he first came into training camp, like he was NBA ready. Well, he was still young, but... Was he uh, confident? He was confident. He was still a little nervous, still kind of feeling his way. Um, but, you know, he had a lot of hype to live up to. Um, and it, it was tough to live up to that hype. But uh, he played hard and... You know, first two episodes of this series, there is a playlist link in the description box down below that not only has this three-part series, but also all the other players within the entire series. Without further ado, these episodes take me a long time to edit and produce, so if you could quickly hit that like button before the video begins, that would be incredible. Subscribe if you are new and you enjoy NBA content, and hit that notification button so you stay notified when a new episode drops. I won't keep you waiting, welcome to the complete collection of LeBron James' greatest stories told by NBA players and legends, part three. LeBron James is by far our best player in this league. I don't by think, far? I don't think there's really anyone next to him. I think he's there, then you go down the list. You know, Bron is, you know, my, my GOAT. Is he? Oh, let's talk about that. The numbers don't lie, he's right there. He's probably ahead of Jordan. I get asked all the time about, you know, MJ, LeBron, and, and it's such a difficult question to ask. All I know is they're the two two best players that I've ever witnessed. You put Magic and Scotty and Penny Hardaway. No, you have to put Jordan and Magic together. And Penny Hardaway. And then you get LeBron. And that's every day, like every day, um, that you're totally focused on this. And he's gone past that eight straight times. It's ridiculous. LeBron is not as good as Michael Jordan? Come on. What do you think? LeBron is in a class by himself. You know, Bron is, you know, my, my GOAT. Is he? Oh, let's talk about that. So you got, give me your top three. Bron, Mike, probably like Shaq. Bron is the best player because I feel like just because you talk about the best basketball player, not the best killer instinct. You understand what I'm saying? The fact that he can play all five positions, the fact that he's done this shit for 17 years consistently, no drop off at any, at any time. time. And we've been saying, well, not we. You can decide. You, you big teething right now. Like, you really feeling this. But I'm <laughs> saying, <laughs> he's, he's the best all around player of all he's, time. He's not far. Oh, yeah, there's no question. All right, I'll give him that. Scotty Pippen. You would know better than anyone. How close is LeBron to catching Jordan? The numbers don't lie. Mm. He's right there. He's probably ahead of Jordan. Oh, my oh! God! Oh! 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 What? Oh! I didn't want to throw this water on you! Michael Jordan is probably the greatest scorer to ever play in the game. But I may go as far as to say LeBron James may be the greatest player to ever play the game because he's so potent offensively not, that not only can he score at will, but he keeps everybody involved. And you have to be on your P's and Q's on defense because uh, no guy on the basketball court is not a threat to score when LeBron James is out there. I saw there was this big debate on Twitter about Kobe versus LeBron, who was a better, Ooh, I guess, a technical man. player. Better skilled player. Skill, yeah, skilled, skilled player. LeBron better skilled, but Kobe's a better player to me. Uh, I think no, I, I think, think Kobe I think. better skilled, okay. and I think uh, LeBron a better player. Really? Just overall, yeah. Just because, Ooh. just because LeBron, just his ability, right, to play with anybody, and make I think anybody LeBron, better. I think dog. LeBron is a better skilled player because he could do more. You know, he a better passer than Kobe. He, he a better rebounder. I mean, he s s ambidextrous. He could use either hand. True. He jumped just as high as Kobe in his if footwork. If, I mean, his footwork. I think Kobe foot. I think Kobe you'll never footwork. see. But the thing is, think about this. We seen Kobe before, or we seen Jordan, yep. who Kobe emulated. Yep. We haven't seen him. Never seen like a LeBron. LeBron. No, for Magic sure. Johnson. You know what I'm saying? Nah. As great as I think Kobe Bryant is, I never said he's not as good as Michael Jordan. Man, this guy LeBron James. Uh, you, you think he could be better than Michael? I do think he. Uh, I thought, and I'll I thought, throw this water on you no, right now. No, no, listen. <laughs> I'm electrocute you twice hey, Kenny, tonight. Hey, Kenny, listen. I, I always look at guys from my era. Like I thought, I would never compare somebody to Michael Jordan, but this guy, LeBron James, 
from a, a basketball, like, he does everything well. There's always been a player who you can compare somebody to. LeBron James is the first player that I've never seen another player that I can compare to. You know, there's always been six, eight guys who were super talented, who were terrific players, but they all weighed like 220, 30 pounds. I don't think we've ever had a guy, uh, you know, who, you know, Tracy, uh, Scottie Pippen, who are all guys, six, seven, six, eight, great defenders, great scorers, very athletic. But LeBron outweighed those guys by 30 pounds. And I, I, we talk about it all the time, like, ooh, man, who, this is a freak of nature. Like, he does everything well. He, like, he what, did, what didn't Michael do well? He, he, Michael did everything well. LeBron James just bigger, stronger, faster. That's the only difference. But Michael, I said, Michael Jordan always said, Michael Jordan had the, the perfect body, 6'6", 225. Can I run, I'll jump, tough, everything? I said, this other guy's 6'8", 260. I mean, we've never had a guy. Like, you, you mentioned Scotty. Scotty, yeah, Scotty could guard a point guard, but Scotty was 6'7", 220. This other guy is 6'8", 260. He guards power forward. He plays power forward. I mean, this guy has the most unique body set. It's kind of like Magic playing the point. You're like, wow, this is a 6'9 point guard. Magic, you don't think Magic? Like, nah, bro, I mean, it's, Magic it's, wasn't it's like this athletic yeah, freak. Magic wasn't doing it like like that. You know, he wasn't this Jumper, athletic freak. It's at, it's at LeBron yeah, the whole time. Like, Scotty Pippen? Hell no. Nah. If you crazy? I mean, if you put them together, <laughs> if you put them together, <laughs> you put Magic and you gotta Scotty put Jordan, and Penny Hardaway. No, you have to put Jordan and Magic together. And Penny Hardaway. And then Hardaway. you get LeBron. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We play in Miami. I'm like, yeah, they, I had a, a thing. If a team cut me, mm -hmm. I was gonna have a good game against them because I'm like, I'm gonna make y'all. Yeah. Make them pay. So I was playing good, woo woo. Then the play happened. Mm -hmm. I know where this is going to go. Then the play happened. <laughs> so Rip Hamilton. I'm like, Rip, <laughs> back screen coming. Like, get through. Uh -huh. Back screen. Like, I'm, cause you know, Tiz, we're a defensive team, so we know somebody you gotta fall back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, back team, back screen coming, back screen coming. So he don't move, he stops. So okay, of course, I got a bag book, take mm -hmm. away, you know, that. So we boom. I'm like this, I'm backing up, you know, guard you man, like I'm doing that. So I'm like, this. they throw the ball up. I was like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Right? Like, Who is that for? Yeah, right, you know what I'm saying? Like, huh? <laughs> so he, you know, come over. I didn't know he jumped over me at the time. He dunked it. Boom! Well, a little good little brush screen by Mario Chalmers. Picks off Hamilton, and he goes right over Lucas. I didn't even see that on the play originally. They go crazy, like, oh, man, I'm like, ah, you know what I'm saying? He said, I didn't know he duck jumped over I me. I didn't know. So my whole thing was like, oh, shit, he dunked on me. Let me go get a bucket real quick. Uh -huh. So I'm like, take the ball out. So I'm <laughs> rushing down court. Tibbs called timeout. <laughs> Oof. So, <laughs> so you got to sit there. That's the worst. <laughs> so now they like, oh, 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 like just going crazy. You know that Miami, you know how Miami fans are. Oh, everybody got oh. weight on in there. Look like you had a. So we on the bench and like. I'm like this, I'm looking at, you know, the circle thing. I was like, and like Joe Kim and Ty's, we all like, it's just quiet. <laughs> it's quiet yeah, like, yeah. you know, the coaches huddle up in the middle before they come give you the game plan, mm -hmm. right? So we all look, I'm like, oh. <laughs> like this, and Joe, and like Ty's gave me this thing, like, mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah, that happened right there. So I get back to phone, I turn both my phones. I had two phones at the time. Mm -hmm. I turned both them off. I'm like, I ain't want it from nobody. Jason Terry, good defense. Wade from behind takes it away. Chalmers, pull, James! Whoa! What do you remember about that play? What do you remember I, about that moment? I, I want to say it's a, one of the lowest moments in my career, but at the same time, I mean, I'll forever go down in history. Like, you got dunked on by the kid. Every camp, every clinic around America, I go and talk to kids. They don't ask, like, Man, how did it feel to play 19 years? How did it feel to play with Dirk or win a championship? Win a championship, yeah. What how question did it feel, How did it feel for LeBron to dunk on you like that? All right, come on, man. Get out of here. Was it a fast break? It was a fast break, but what happened was I was coming down, 
I turn the ball over. Okay. So it's just instinct for me when you turn it over, I got to get it back. So I'm chasing it. I mean, I might have chased their whole team and the coach trying to get the ball back. I got Chalmers coming at me and then LeBron's coming down the middle. Took my eye off LeBron for one second, chased Chalmers, turned back around, and he was already in the air. Like, <laughs> in slow motion. And what made me jump is what I'm trying to figure out. Like, you know it, like even if you did jump. You're not gonna touch man, that, man. You ain't touching that. Oh. And I jumped, man, and he lifted me on his knee, and I was still going up with him. Like LeBron just bang, bang, it was all like I elevated, I was in the rim. Hit the ground, man. And I didn't hop up quick. I laid there for a minute. And I think that's the picture, the meme that's out. Like I'm laying there with my arms folded. <laughs> <laughs> like me in the funeral, man. I can't front, bro. Uh, I was one of those people on social media just dying cool. laughing at this moment. For three weeks, I was checking my phone, and people were sending me messages, man, you okay? Like, numbers I haven't <laughs> heard in, in eight years, I'm seeing numbers pop up. Jet, you are you good? You, you dead, big homie? You, you good? Like, I don't know what these people are talking about. They even said in Wikipedia, they said that was my death date, and they had the date and everything on it. That's crazy, man. Michael Jordan. I don't think there could be a comparison to him, only because he's in a category far above everyone else, only because he's a mold breaker. Like, you can't, you're not going to be Muhammad Ali. You're never going to be Ali. You can be a great fighter. You can be the best at what you do. You can have a heck of a knockout punch, but you're not Ali. You're not Jordan because you can't break a ground that hadn't been broken yet. Uh, I don't see that LeBron is going to break a ground that hasn't been. You can't be magic. You're not going to be the first 6'9 guard that come into the league and change the dynamic of what a point guard is. So he will never be that. He will be a great player, but he'll never be a groundbreaker. But he's, I, I, I disagree. I mean, I, I agree that Michael is above and beyond everybody, but LeBron is breaking new ground with the way he's playing, I think. I, I don't even know what position he plays, but he can guard all five spots. He's really the point guard, but then he plays power forward sometimes. I was going to ask you, Steve. I, I mean, is this... A, well, sometimes you hear guys, well, he redefined the power forward position. He Charles redefined, redefined yeah, power yeah, forward. Exactly. So what has, what has LeBron redefined? Well, well, oh, let me make this... Well, I think the point that Steve was trying to make... Like, if you remember last year in the playoffs, he guarded Derrick Rose. Mm-hmm. We would never let a 6'8 guy guard the MVP in, in, in our sport. I, would, I disagree. I mean, Scottie Pippen did that. Oh, but, but I'm I mean, saying, but Scottie Pippen would never play power forward. Right, but meaning, like, okay, as great as Shaq was, he, he's never, everyone always says, well, Will. Now, Shaq, greatest player we've ever seen at his position at our, as a, but he's always, because Wilt was the groundbreaker, so he never gets that. The, all the credit he probably deserved because he can't break through that Wilt comparison. Well, so that's I think on the that's people. LeBron but is. that's on fans I think, and, and But I think people. that's what we're talking about. So I think that's the oh. same thing with, with LeBron. He'll never be in that Michael mm -hmm. category because he could never meet up to that. Maybe that's next, though. Maybe that's the next step for him. He's got to win four or five more titles, and then people will talk about him in that kind of I new role. I still think it'll be Kobe. Um, he's added... Um, the three-point threat. You know, when we came here three years ago in the first meeting, um, we, you know, we, we weren't fearful of his shot. We were fearful of his power and his penetration and his passing. But now you fear everything. And I think maybe the greatest testament to LeBron is that, you know, five years ago, he was one of the top five players of all time. Um, and f from five years ago till now, he's, it seems like he's ten times better because he's added so much skill to his game. And uh, I, 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 I get asked all the time about, you know, MJ, LeBron, and, and it's such a difficult question to ask. All I know is they're the two, two best players that I've ever witnessed. Um, they're very different, but, you know, however you want to rank them, you know, they're, they're right there together. I'm shocked at LeBron that he's been able to do it for this long. Consistency, yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. and we're talking about him going to his, potentially his seventh, seventh. NBA final. Yeah. And, you know, to he's dominated this era he of basketball yeah. that, that he's played in. And, you know, to, to be able to do it consistently at this level in these many places, Cleveland, Miami, right. back to Cleveland, right. he's been the guy, you know, which is... 
you know, head wise, I mean, had to figure it out. He's got to be a basketball savant genius, just totally on another different level that, you know, arguably we haven't seen in this league. Shout out to LB and your greatness, bro. You out here doing it every year. You've been consistent. He's never hurt. You never hear anything in the, in the news about him. He's a great, I mean, great humanitarian. So on and so on with the ETC when it comes to LB. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> LB starting schools. He's going 25 in the fourth against the Pistons. What else you going to do, bro? Uh, he's, he's he's unbelievable, and I think the you know we've played now till May 25th and May 27th the last two years, and um, we started on September 25th, and that's every day, like every day um, that you're totally focused on this, and he's gone past that eight straight times. It's ridiculous. I'm, and and does it at this level and with the pressure, with the scrutiny, doesn't matter. It's just unbelievable. Our, our goal going into the series was to make him exert as much energy as humanly possible and, um, and try to be as good as we can on everybody else who are good players. And, uh, you know, for the most part, I thought we were pretty good at that. And, you know, multiple games now in TD Garden, held them under 100, you know, three games in the 80s. But he still scored 35. It's a joke. The easy cut. James for three. That's good. Puts Aaron Baines in the pick and roll, and that's exactly what they do. Try another three and nails it. Markson out there right now with him. James drives on Orford, gets inside, and lays it in off the glass. Deflected, picked up by James. Turns, shoots, and hits. Drives, continues off balance, banks at home. Here comes James in the open floor. James grabbed from behind. Count it. Goal 10 and one. Mama, there goes that man. <laughs> Would LeBron get the super status of the NBA if he came into the league in the 90s? I, I, I think he's an athletic uh, Ros, Oscar Robertson. If you look at that 60s era, 70s era, whatever that but was. But three inches bigger. And three inches bigger. Mm -hmm. If Then he's, uh, if you look in the 80s era, he's an athletic Magic Johnson. Uh, so then, And then in this era, he's himself. But you add the athleticism that the other guys that had the comparable skill sets had. Can we go he, to the next question? Seriously. Yeah. It's LeBron James. Yeah. Yeah. He's one of the top, what, five, ten players yep. of all time. Who's the player that's playing in the NBA today, Elgin Baylor, that could have held his own in the league while you were playing and with the oh, rules that no you were playing about on? It. LeBron James. I mean, he's like a freak of nature. I mean, this guy, man, he's built like Hercules. I mean, he's 6'8", and I think he weighs like 275 or 280. I mean, he should be out there playing football, too. But, I mean, he is one heck of an athlete. As far as playing basketball, you've got to enjoy this guy. If you're a basketball fan, you've got to sit back and go, wow, how do he do that? Or I always say, boy, I wish I had his speed. Yeah. You know? But some of the stuff that kid does out there, he's by far, you know, Kobe was always my favorite since, yeah. since I got out. I don't like that, by the way. But, uh, but uh, LeBron James is by far our best player in this league. I don't by think, far. I don't think there's really anyone next to him. I think he's there, then you go down the list. Being a, a small forward, you know, understand what type of player he is. Uh, like, again, like Charles said, he's a player at 6'8", 260, 270, with unbelievable speed and athleticism. You can't. Where, where have you ever he, seen? He that? actually could have been he better is. in IR. In the and I tell you something: if he ever really learns how to play on the post and adapt that as part of his game, you think he's unstoppable now? He might have played better. He might have played better. Twenty-four, falling away. Got it. Start looking to go now. Trying to get it in the fridge. LeBron, tough shot. No, Nothing no. too tough for the King tonight. LeBron, baseline jump shot. Devin. Another opportunity, LeBron, tough shot! He's two or three, five points, consecutive wins, and uh, this is something they want to hang their head on. Oh my goodness. Minute 20 to play here in the quarter. LeBron turns, confronts two players. You just said in, uh, listen, our, era, in our, our era, with better players and guys. Better play players, different. and I think you've been posting up more. Yeah. And also because the way we filed in the 90s, right. he'd have developed a jump shot even quicker. All right, yeah, unanimous yes to that, and 
Steve Kerr getting testy. And we'll be back with <laughs> a little bit more no on Open Court on NBA TV. Are they no, the question, right after this. LeBron would have been horrible in the 80s. <laughs> he would have sucked he in the been 70s. Awful. He would have been brutal in the 70s. He might not even made the team. It's it might have been like kid. Darren Walker said Tracy back. was on to go yes. play for three years. There's Darren Walker would have cut him. <laughs> Matt made a really good point, Sean. Do you think that LeBron James is still the best player in the league at 36? Uh, he's always been the best player. Uh, he's probably been the best player in the league since his third or fourth year in the league. Uh, it seems to me that, you know, the media, they like to uh, outsmart themselves and try to figure out a different MVP every year. Oh, we like this guy. This guy's had a better year, blah, blah, blah. That, that to me is kind of like the Michael Jordan effect, if you will, where uh, you know who the best player in the league is, but you want to prove that you're smarter than everybody else by uh, electing somebody else's MVP. Uh, LeBron James has been the MVP uh, basically every year he's been in the league. Uh, I know that uh, we like to compare other players to him and say this guy is good. No one in this league right now has done what he's done, uh, taking three different teams to the finals. And some of those teams, uh, the, the Cleveland team that he won with, they had no business winning the NBA Finals if it wasn't for him. So, uh, to me, he's still the undisputed king. Yeah, and you think about King James. He's played basketball so long that he actually played when Matt Bonner was playing. So, Matt, do you have any special <laughs> yeah. stories uh, going up against LeBron in your years? Oh, a ton. But one that particularly sticks out in my mind was one time I was the lone person back on defense. And he was coming at me like a freight train. So, I'm like, all right. I'm just going to wrap him up and make him earn it at the free throw line. And right there, you see how strong and powerful he is. He went right through my arms and somehow finished that bas basket. And I remember looking at Coach Pop after he hit it. And Coach Pop just looked at me and shrugged his shoulders like, hey. He's LeBron James. That's what makes him difficult to guard. Anybody else? That's LeBron James. What do you want from me? <laughs> If you could have picked any current player right now to play with for an entire season, who would you have picked? I, uh, probably Kobe, because really? the fact that he's, um, he, well, of course he wouldn't have been shooting as much as he does now. Yeah, but, you would have had to talk his, with him. His desire to win, his the dedication in the off season to get better, um, and he just he's just tough. He's just a tough cat. But if you want to have fun like I did with Bill Walton, you play with LeBron. Really? It would been probably more fun to play with uh, LeBron. But if you want to win and win and win, it's Kobe. If he wants to win, he'd like to play with Kobe. If he wants to have fun, he'd like to play with you. Everyone interprets. How did you interpret? Um, well, I mean, it's simple. Kobe has five rings and I have none. Okay. So it's easy to say that. You know, if I got five rings and Kobe has none, then it'd probably be the other way around. So, you know, uh, I'm an easy target. Let's say that. Okay. If someone wants to get a point across, you just throw LeBron's name in there. You could be watching cartoons with your kids and you don't like you, you say, blame it on LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> you go to the grocery store and they don't have the milk that you like, you say it's LeBron's fault. <laughs> I'm easy targets and I understand that. I mean, it's not, it doesn't get to me at all. Part of this vote or the thought process is always what is the good story. When Charles won the MVP, when Carl Malone won an MVP, they were a, a fresher story than Michael Jordan. I voted for Jordan every year. Because I just thought that he is the most valuable player in the league and he's going to win a championship. And I would vote the same way with LeBron. I always looked at him. He's, he's like Jordan, that he's the most valuable person in the NBA and he's going to play for a championship. Maybe that's not you know fair to do it that way, but I didn't go out of my way to go, boy, I'm kind of bored with voting for the same guy. How right. about, I mean, Greek Freak was a great story last year. He wasn't the same story this year. I thought LeBron was a better story. That didn't mean he was the, the MVP, but I probably would have leaned that way to vote for LeBron to do what he's doing. And he completely reinvented the roster, made Anthony Davis the focal point, led the league in assist, and he did it in the Western Conference where people said, well, let's see what LeBron would do if he played in the Western Conference. So from a storyline, that was a better story than the Greek Freak. And also, Theodore, I, I think if you ask LeBron deep down, um, I, he's trying to do something that no one's ever done in the history of the game. And that's when three championships with three different organizations and winning finals MVP. No one's ever done that. Um, he's done it twice, obviously, with Miami and Cleveland, and he has a chance to do that 
with the Lakers. Obviously, he would probably be battling for that finals MVP with Anthony Davis, but he has an opportunity to do something Michael Jordan's never done, Larry Bird, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, which would be his fourth, but winning finals MVP as well. I think LeBron's at the redemptive stage. I think he's at the stage where he's put in the time. He's been proving who he was. He's been challenged by everybody. And the fact that, you know, he's stayed quiet and and finished his goal kind of just puts him at the stage where I've done everything I've asked for uh, that you've asked of me. Now let me have the freedom to pursue and chase the rest of these uh, championships. You know, I look at it, I think uh, he started not listening to all the critics. I think the one thing is, I think he listened to everything. I think in the finals, last, the year before against Dallas, he was up tweeting at 3 a.m., you know, talking to fans. I think he finally started to say, let me just be myself. And whatever happens, happens, wherever the chips may fall. And he started to play the game a different way. For me, seeing him post up. To me, taking a challenge of guarding fours. He didn't do that in the Dallas series. He never really guarded a dirt whiskey. <clears throat> I think now he's he accept the challenge right now to play center. So I think he accept now I'll do whatever it takes. I'm going to play my way. And I think that's what he did is pretty much, you know, canceled out the noise and just started to play. What's scary is what lies ahead for him. He's already won three MVPs. He's considered by all of us as the best player on the planet right now. I think his best basketball is yet to come because of that one championship. And I think that's what's scary. The best basketball for LeBron James, I believe, is ahead of him. Kind of scary, isn't it, Shaq? We haven't seen the best of LeBron James yet? It's very scary, but unfortunately for LeBron, now that the monkey is off his back, he's going to be compared to two people. That's Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan. So now the question is, how many championships can he get? We all know he's a competitor, and you know he's going to be going for that five and six mark. Mm -hmm. Hmm. What do you think, Steve? Well, he's the most scrutinized athlete probably in the history of the world, you know, given the amount of media these days. I thought it was just really cool watching him break through that wall, as, as Steve said. I mean, he had that, that moment this year he, where he broke through to the next level, uh, not only because he got the ring, but the manner in which he did it. The Dallas series, you know, a couple of years ago, he struggled in the finals. This time, he totally dominated. And I just think about the maturity you know, you think back to his Cleveland days, pregame warm-ups, they're doing all the camera stuff, and, mm -hmm. you know, it was all fun. It started not being fun for him for a couple of years there. And then I think he just realized the only way that this, this is really fun at this level is to win, and, and he got it done. And that concludes the complete collection series on LeBron James. If you enjoyed this series, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you are new for a new episode, and tell me which player you would like to see next down below in the comment section. Hit that notification button so you're notified when a new episode releases, and I will catch you guys in the next video. I am out. Peace.